I chose a career in medicine because that's really all I ever wanted to do. I, I was unusual in that uh, more than that, I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon from about the age of 10. Uh, and I think it goes back to my mother because she was born with a congenital problem in her hip that meant she got arthritis at a very young age. And I remember going to see her in Wrightington Hospital on the night after she'd had her hip replaced and she would have only been about 40 years old when she had that done. And she was there with the drips up and with the drains in and the big dressing on her leg. And, and I remember asking her how, how it was. And she said it was fantastic because for the first time in 15 years, she couldn't feel any pain in her hip. And, and I remember thinking at the time, if you can do that to someone and they can be that happy within hours of you doing it, then that's a really good thing to do and, and I quite like to do that. I went to medical school in Liverpool. I qualified in 1986 and very quickly I moved to Nottingham. Nottingham at that time had, uh, but still has, a, a, an excellent reputation for orthopaedics and for training in particular. And so I chose to go there and I spent the best part of 12 years in Nottingham. Started off with some um, junior surgical jobs and then I did a period of uh, research and then I actually completed all my orthopaedic training in Nottingham and that culminated in my consultant appointment in 1998. My research followed on from my first job in Nottingham because while I was in uh, Nottingham uh, there was a plane crashed on the M1 at Kegworth in 1989 and there were a lot of seriously Ill, Ill uh, injured passengers and they were taken to Queen's Medical Centre amongst two other hospitals for treatment. I was one of the junior doctors and I was involved in their treatment. From that crash there spawned a research project and that culminated in my research project which was to devise the best brace position for passengers to adopt if a plane is about to crash. And I submitted that as my doctoral thesis and the position that was devised is the one that is displayed on passenger safety cards on uh, planes that fly out of the United Kingdom. I chose a shoulder surgery partly because my mentor in Nottingham was Professor Angus Wallace and that was his specialty area of interest. And I became interested in shoulders because it was a rapidly expanding specialty. If we look at where shoulder surgery has come in the last 30 years, it's an enormous journey. Uh, initially, every orthopaedic complaint was a frozen shoulder, but more recently, because of MRI scans, because of keyhole surgery, we now have a multitude of diagnoses, and by having different diagnoses, we can offer different treatments, and so shoulder surgery is still a very rapidly expanding dynamic specialty, which makes it a very exciting one to work in. My proudest achievements in uh, my career probably relate to the, the acknowledgement I've received from my colleagues and from my patients. And um, in saying that, I mean, in the early days, I established a name for being at, at the forefront of that sort of keyhole shoulder surgery techniques. And that was recognized by my colleagues in Europe and in the United States in that I was invited to do live surgical demonstrations in Europe and in uh, the United States. And to invite someone to operate in your theater, in your domain, but out of their domain, shows a degree of confidence and trust in that individual that um, I found very flattering. So I, I guess I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the recognition I've received from patients in that people seem to want to come and be treated by me. I guess at the extreme, that would be that the elite athletes, I've had the privilege of being the upper limb surgeon to Liverpool Football Club for over 10 years now. And during that time, I've treated quite a large number of elite athletes, particularly footballers, and not just from Liverpool, I've treated them from five or six other premiership football clubs. And where you've got elite athletes, clubs in particular, are very careful who they send those players to. And for a player to be sent to me from 
another part of Britain, which realistically is not an uncommon occurrence, shows a degree of confidence in my abilities that I find, again, flattering and comforting. I am the managing partner of the Bone and Joint Centre. I think the Bone and Joint Centre has been almost revolutionary in this country in terms of uh, offering a complete service, but with the uh, tenant that there was a governance structure in to ensure the highest quality standards of care. And I think that's a model that will be repeated uh, as time goes by and duplicated because I think it's the best model by which to supply healthcare. So in the Bone and Joint Centre I have uh, two roles. I have a role as an orthopaedic surgeon and, and a specialist in shoulder and elbow problems. But in addition, I have been the managing partner of the Bone and Joint Centre um, since its inception, which has been interesting because it has required me to take on somewhat of a managerial or administrative role. And there are challenges to be met when you have to uh, help manage orthopaedic surgeons, particularly a group of nine because they all tend to be relatively strong-willed individuals and so to achieve consensus going forward is sometimes difficult but I've enjoyed that. It's been um, a different aspect to my life and I, I still enjoy it to this day which is probably why I'm still doing the job.